Hey guys, this is what happened, but you weren't here, so you missed it. Um, today's the day you've all been waiting for. We're going to be talking about the first two episodes of The Apprentice, and by we, I mean I am. All right, so let me preface this with um, my little story about Donald Trump. When I was in college studying architecture, we uh, went to Trump Tower, and we got... When you're an architecture student, you get to go places that most people don't get to go, because... It's all under the premise of you're studying the architecture of the building and blah, blah, blah. So we got to go up into the office area and like the personal spaces upstairs, you know, beyond the retail. And I actually saw Donald Trump. And he was a lot younger then because it was like over 25 years ago. And uh, he wasn't as big then as he is now. So it probably wasn't as exciting to see him back then. But if I saw him now, I'd be like, yo, Donald. All right, so the whole premise of the show, it's a 13-week job interview, I think. 16 people affected by the economic downturn. Oh, that is so on the pulse, Donald. Amazing. All right, <laughs> not really. All right, so they had the eclectic group that they have is all lawyers, practically. Most of the people are unemployed lawyers. How is that possible? I don't know. All right, one girl went from six figures to buying secondhand clothing. If you had a job for six figures and you're now buying secondhand clothing, you didn't save up enough money to have a cushion, you're stupid. You should be fired immediately. David, the father of five. This guy is a loose cannon. He's all over the place. And his marriage broke up. I can see why. All right. And boo-hoo, Miss America run-up, runner-up, the uh, lawyer who didn't get her dream job. Blah, blah, blah. So tired of her. Nicole was her name. All right, so as always on The Apprentice, it is men versus women in the beginning. And the men were quick to pick their team name. It was Octane. Uh, they volunteered Gene to be the project manager, even though he really didn't want to be. Uh, on the ladies' team, they came up with Fortitude because it's great name. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Nicole volunteered herself to be the project manager, and Masa was not happy about it, but everybody was like, yeah, Nicole, whatever. So the project is to design and build an ultra-modern workspace, and yeah, it's got to be specific to the real estate, because the Trumps don't like crap. It better be good. All right, so Gene, I thought, okay, now he's got the right idea here. He said he wanted a green office space and by green I thought he meant like recycled and all that because like that's so hot right now but when he said green he meant green with like plants and color and stuff like that so then I was like hmm all right. Uh, right off the bat David and Clint were butting heads and then eventually uh, David started getting on Jean's nerves too and they had a shouting match. All right, so on the ladies' team, Fortitude, Nicole and Tiana, they were butting heads, too. Tiana was some kind of a real estate um, designer. I don't know if that's what, how you would classify her. I guess she's done staging and stuff like that. And Nicole was not using her effectively until they went furniture shopping, and then they were all besties. But after... The furniture shopping, Don came in and started asking questions and digging around, and Tiana overheard Nicole saying, well, Tiana sucked in the beginning. So that pissed her off, and then she went and badmouthed Nicole to Don. All right, so they each throw, threw each other under the bus, you know, tit for tat. So the lady space, all right, when they showed it, I thought it looked kind of cheap. Um, compared to the men's, it was like comparing Ikea to, like, say, Pottery Barn or something. The men's was full of color, and it seemed a little bit more warm, and the ladies was kind of cold and cheap looking to me. Uh, Trump didn't like either one of them, really, but he had to choose one. So at the men's office, the cameramen fell on the rug. In fact, I think it was two guys tripped on the rug. Hello, have you ever heard of tape? That's so dangerous. That guy could have cracked his head open. I smell a lawsuit. And there's about 12 lawyers there to, like, file it. Um, time for the boardroom. Still nobody knows who Trumpy had picked at this point. So time to throw people under the bus before you actually find out if you needed to or not. Jean calls out James because the whole, you know, you're supposed to paint that stripe, but you didn't do exactly the way I wanted it. But that's the thing that Trump really likes. So 
Then the whole conflict between Clint and David. You know, the two meatheads. All right, and on the ladies' team, Nicole, uh, she was the project manager, but everybody pretty much threw her into the bus for being wishy-washy. She kept uh, asking everybody's opinion and didn't have any of her own. And Tiana especially called her out. And somebody lit a fire on the Moss's ass, and she was like a rabid pit bull. She would not shut up. You know, I was a little surprised that uh, Trump and Ivanka and Don were all like, oh, she's so abrasive. You know, in past boardrooms that I've seen, they were like, if you don't fight back hard enough, they, they think you're some kind of a wimp. So there must be some sort of happy medium in between it, but I guess they don't like to see a woman getting all aggressive like that. But she is an assistant district attorney. So the men end up winning. And Gene, as his reward, gets to hang out with Trump, which is a very nice reward. At the boardroom, and before the boardroom, everybody jumped on the Nicole feeding frenzy. Nicole decided to take back Masa and uh, Tiana. And they went at her like she was made out of ham. They, he had no choice but to fire her. She might be a nice person, but you know what? She's not a good leader. All right, so, and he's going to set her up with an appointment to talk to, uh, interview at Miss America pageant or something, which he owns anyway, so she's got the job. All right, so part two, which was last night, the second episode, George is back for Ivanka. I have to say I really enjoy George. He is very, he's an old, sto he's like an old stodgy guy. I like that. So the task for this episode was they had to sell ice cream out of a cart in New York City. And the people who make the most profit win. Isn't that how it always is? David and Poppy were the PMs. At Octane, uh, David said, oh, everybody needs costumes or uniforms or something. And they headed right out to Union Square and started selling really aggressively. I mean, they were really aggressive. I don't know if I was a big fan of that, but they sold a lot of ice cream. And at Fortitude, Stephanie was really running the show. Poppy was kind of a pushover. Poppy was sloppy. Uh, Stephanie was yelling at people. She was getting a little bit aggressive. Not five. It's five dollars. It's not three dollars. What's wrong with you? You can't make up different prices for everyone. Uh, then, I don't know whose idea it was, but the ladies dressed in these garish pink tank tops with these whorish feathers in their hair. It looked, they looked like saloon girls. It was really weird. But apparently the guys liked it because they sold a lot of ice cream. So the ladies the next day showed up at Union Square. But the early bird gets the worm because the guys were there first. So they had to move. Uh, Stephanie totally overpowered Poppy in this. I don't know. Um, the ladies had a little strategy at the end though. They went for the last 10 minutes where the guys were selling their ice cream and totally bums rushed them and like were giving out free ice cream so that they couldn't sell any more of their ice cream. That was pretty smart. I thought it was kind of a bitch move, but I guess it helped them out in the end. So at the boardroom, FYI, Trump is not gay. I don't know why he said that, but whatever. Uh, the ladies' least strong player? Well, if you ask Poppy, it was Liza. And Liza was not too happy about that. And Trump ended up fake firing her and looked like she was almost going to cry. And I was like, oh man, if she cries, that's it. Trump's going to fire her for real. But he was like, oh, just kidding. And he's like, I'm in a weird mood, whatever. I'm sure that happens like 90% of the time. So Liza, since she was pissed, called out Poppy. And she said, Stephanie ran everything. So then on the men's team, David, he totally called out James and Alex as the weakest. They had not a lot of experience selling, so they were quick to admit that, yeah, we don't have a lot of experience selling, so we probably were the weakest, whatever. Trump was not too happy about that because he was expecting these guys to fight back, and David just went over them like a steamroller. It was, it was pathetic to watch because these guys were not fighting whatsoever. Alex ended up selling the least. Did I happen to mention that the ladies won? <laughs> Well, the ladies won, and Alex sold the least, and uh, of course, David had no choice but to take back um, Alex and James to the boardroom because they were the weakest players. 
And it was probably the easiest for him to get rid of because they sucked the most and they weren't going to fight back. So Alex ended up getting fired. Next time, it's a hotel for dogs. That was pretty abrupt, wasn't it? <laughs> I meant to say at the end when they did the interview, um, Alex got a job as like a construction manager. So he ended up uh, getting something out of this whole experience. It wasn't a total loss. So that's good because he got a job that he really enjoyed. Um, I hope that they will update everyone like on the progress or you know where they are now at the end of the episodes because I think that's a lot more interesting than just saying you know like you're fired, get out. So good one, Trump. I appreciate um, the backstory on the fired people. So keep it up. So until next time, much love.